All right, I don't even think my teammates have loaded in yet fully, but you could just see. I'm taking a little bit of damage, but instantly available with Rocket Rift active. Look how fast it died. Oh no, I'm trapped in a room with a bunch of zombies. No, nah, they're trapped in a room with me. Ah! <laughs> it's like, it's really hard to record for a weapon like this because look how fast they die. <laughs> What you're seeing on screen is my favorite melee build in Fortnite Save the World. This is with the old loadout and the gameplay that you're seeing from my previous video. I'll link it down below. And basically with the storm blade and crit explosions, whenever you crit, it explodes and that kills everything around you. It's a super, super fun loadout. Now, this build is kind of outdated. That's what we're here to talk about. This was done with the math that we knew at the time. Josh, you did an excellent job parsing out all of the best heroes for what he knew to make the best loadout possible and what else? in the lead actually made sense at the time. Toy rocking out to crit more often, battle beat and fumble just to activate Toy rocking out, swing a little faster, do a little bit more damage, Paleo Luna in support because even when it's not blast in the past and even in support, she's actually always that strong. Monster Mash was keeping us alive, which is really, really useful. And then this bottom perk, I think is Assassin Sarah, but you can pretty much use whatever you want at this point. It's a really good build. However, with new information and a better understanding of how the game works, AS407 and a team of very helpful people have come up with a much, much better build. I'm gonna show a spreadsheet here. It is in light mode, so if you're in a dark room, be warned, this is gonna be bright, but this is sort of the special thanks section. I really wanna include this in the video because lots of people were involved in understanding this very thoroughly. There are definitely some regular names that have been on here on my channel before. A uh, huge shout out to Nuts and Bolts. He's helped a lot on this channel with different uh, information. Xylik does a lot of leaks and the spreadsheets with enemy stats. Really, really good stuff. Musicians are regular. I'm not gonna thank everybody individually, but you get the idea. A lot of people were involved and uh, AS407 took that understanding and this dude works on mobile by the way unrelated to anything we have begged him to get a computer and he just doesn't think he needs it that's besides the point but he did all of this by hand he didn't automate this at all Oh my goodness, look how thorough it is. When you guys tell me that a loadout I'm using is inferior to a different build, this is the best way to convince me. So what we are focusing on, what we are focusing on is this Blast from the Past ranked right here. This is what we're looking at. With a bright core Stormblade running the loadout that I'll show in a second, we are doing 1.5 million damage per second to a single target. Now that's with an explosion, which is obviously affecting other targets, doing tons of damage to tons of crowds, all at the same time, and there's a lot going on there that I am absolutely going to explain thoroughly. If you guys don't want any more math, enough of this beast, just show me the build. I trust you, it's good. Timestamps are on this video so you can skip ahead just to the gameplay where we start the actual match, but I'm gonna get into the weeds right now. So, Brightcore is very important because we are taking advantage of Paleo Luna. She makes it so that she adds 9% of your current health to your melee damage. My precise health varies with who's at my team when I'm recording my videos, but typically with a Blast from the Past build tripling your health and a full team with high level teammates, you're typically in the neighborhood of about 1.4 or more million health. That means Paleo Luna is adding more than 100,000 damage to every single swing, which means with Brightcore swinging 10% faster than Sunbeam, if you guys didn't know, you're just doing 10% more, you know, it's tens of thousands of extra damage per second. And this is the copy of the weapon we're using. If we're doing a 0.36 swing speed, we're, we're swinging roughly three times a second. It's a little less than that, but three times per second for easy math is about 400, maybe 500,000 DPS before we even get started. How do we get to 1.5 million? Well, that's where these perks are very specific. Attack speed is obviously because of Paleo Luna, but a crit rating perk is actually very essential because we want to crit more often. As you can see, it's 50% of the time with Whiteout Fiona in support. Like I said, I'm getting into the weeds, but I'm skipping ahead here just to mention her. She ups the crit rating of swords. She makes you crit more. It's not that complicated, I guess, but basically when you're critting with this weapon, you are exploding the enemies around you. And what AS407 found is that that crit explosion carries Paleo Luna's 9% to your health, which means you're getting 9% of her health on every single swing, which applies to every single enemy in that swing. If you swing the weapon once and you hit five enemies, they're all getting 9% of your current health. Then if you crit on any one of those targets and they explode, that explosion is adding that 9% again, effectively activating Paleo Luna's perk twice per target, which is an explosion, which could hit every enemy at once. If you swing through a crowd of five targets and you crit on one of them, you're effectively hitting each of them with a normal swing, 9% of Paleo Luna on top of them, the explosion is doing its damage, and 9% of your health is being applied again on top of the explosion. We're hitting all five enemies 
four different times in one swing, which is a happening basically three times a second, but it gets better. I talked to AS407 before I recorded this. I wanted to make sure that everything was correct. He added a little bit of information, just a tidbit on top. That explosion, if the enemy has a high enough health, apparently applies her bonus twice. So you're adding another bonus of your 9% health to each of those individual targets. So it's kind of insane. And I'm just disregarding the fact that when you are swinging through a crowd of enemies, they each have their individual chance to crit. So in my example that I was spelling out for explanatory purposes, I'm only critting on like the first target. But if you swing through a crowd and you crit on two or three of those targets, just ka -ching -ching -ching, you know, that 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 satisfying chunk of an explosion. It's super satisfying. I know a lot of my gameplay is being shown without the audio, but maybe we can unmute it for a second just to enjoy the beautiful sound that is that weapon exploding. Isn't it so great? It's great. It's really, really great. So yeah, that's basically what's happening with this. And that's why we're running crit rating. Typically, if you're running Paleo Luna in the lead with any normal melee, you want as many attack speed perks as possible because she has no cooldown. Every single swing of your weapon will apply her 9%. But because that explosion doubles or triples how often it's activated, plus the explosion itself is doing a pretty good chunk of damage, you definitely want that crit rating perk. This weapon's locked to energy, so there's no, no discussion there. Damage is the only thing that makes sense here. Maybe life leech, but we have coconuts. We'll to that and then the the bottom perk here damage to miss monsters of bosses again it's the only thing that makes any difference we're not afflicting slowing or stunning maybe we're stunning but extra damage to miss monsters of bosses makes total sense there i'm not going to wait uh, i'm not going to weigh too heavily on that right now so that's basically the build paleo luna is doing a ton of extra damage blast in the past is making that happen soaring and hide is just making you really really tanky which is super important in a melee build because you're constantly taking damage and yeah, I'm using Sorian Hyde. She is, um, Sorian Vigor, sorry. She is really bad. 2.125% of your health every five seconds is abysmal. It basically takes four minutes to get back to full health. But if you look through this, there's nothing that makes sense. We're not doing ability damage. We're not using energy. We're not using abilities to heal us and we're not doing range damage. So it's the only thing that does anything for us, but that's fine. Our main healing is obviously coconuts for two amazing reasons. He gives you a ton of health. A third of your health is instantly recovered when you eat a coconut and it heals you over the next 30 seconds. I've explained this a hundred times on my channel, but I'm saying it again. And with Crossbones Barrett, he gives you an extra 16%, which as he's explained to me, that 16% applies to your initial hit and the crit explosion so it's actually getting a little doubled up here and that's just stupid <laughs> and i think that 16 percent also applies to like paleo luna's damage as well like it's, it's a crazy amount of extra damage it really makes sense and battle beat yeah i know we're not using totally rocking out but rock and riff is good enough to use because of several things first and foremost the, the raw bonus is upping our swing speed by 32 percent so i already said we're swinging with a 0.36 attack speed like that's how fast one swing takes so we're roughly swinging three times a second when this is activated we definitely are swinging more than three times a second, which is amazing amount of damage. Amazing amount of damage. And it increases all of your damage by 50%. Just so we're getting a damage and a swing speed bonus at the same time. It's stupid. And the third reason I was talking about is that it's 10 eliminations in nine seconds. Well, with Paleo Luna, since the beginning of her perk, I guess, that 9% extra damage counts as a second kill. When you kill a target with that 9% extra damage, you're basically activating Battle Beat in five eliminations instead of 10. I don't know why. I only mention this because it's been a bug for years and years and might as well share it with the world because that's just how that works. If it does get patched eventually, 10 kills is totally easy with this build as you've probably been seeing from plenty of gameplay. It's a lot. So yeah, crazy long intro, lots to go over. It's a really, really strong build and it is roughly 50% stronger than the previous one. I like that number, so that'll be in the title and thumbnail. Suffice it to say, it's a lot stronger. And one thing that's insanely important is that Paleo Luna is immediately active. What I never liked about the old build is we were using Fumble, so you had to really take advantage of White Out Fiona because Totally Rockin' Out wasn't active. You had to get some normal kills and hope for a Fumble Football or activate Battle Beat, and it, would, it took a little bit of time to set up. Your single target damage versus a Smasher was terrible. With Paleo Luna, so long as your health is up, she's just instantly ready and 50% on top of that, which is just crazy. Coconuts will keep you alive during the fight, and I'm gonna flashbang you again just to show you. Uh, my, my previous build was slightly weaker than this, but the strongest possible totally rocking out build that he could calculate was just over a million dps that is with max 160 crit rating and the perk decays over eight seconds and so you're never sustaining that million dps paleo luna is 50 percent stronger than that without any of the setup or any of the decay granted once again i'll repeat that you are taking damage while you're obviously playing the game so you're not 
always going to be at peak efficiency, but coconuts goes a long way to counter that. And if you're already doing 50% more, you can lose a lot of health while still being significantly stronger. So it's just a really, really strong, really consistent, no setup necessary build. The only thing you have to worry about is eating coconuts and managing your health. So... Woo! With what was probably one of the longest intros I've ever had to one of these fun 160 builds, let's hop in game and uh, actually, <laughs> actually run the weapon. All right, I don't even think my teammates have loaded in yet fully, but you could just see. I'm taking a little bit of damage, but instantly available with Rocket Riff active. Look how fast it died! <laughs> Holy crap, dude. This is what I'm talking about with that improved single target damage. Obviously, I'm in a water zone, so I'm running uh, super slow, but wow. All that damage is just immediately available. No rock and riff active. Obviously, we did have rock and riff here, but we didn't need totally rocking out to be active for this to work. We can just walk up and let's see. One swing. Two swings. Two swings to take out a 160 nurse. That's incredible. That's incredible. Look how casually it just spits out all this damage. Now, that's at uh, two thirds of my health remaining. So I need to go get some coconuts. All right, still no coconuts, but with health ro <laughs> with health missing, it doesn't even matter. Look at all that damage. I'm going to be doing this the whole video, by the way. Just gushing about this build. AS showed me this loadout and explained it to me thoroughly. And I, I tried this out the day that he did so, and it just blew my mind. I always consider this to be my favorite melee build, even if it wasn't technically the strongest, because it was just super fun. Like, listen to this. Okay, all right, maybe maybe listening right when everything's done exploding is a bad time, but improving a build that I've already been enjoying and to make it this much stronger is so satisfying. I really can't stress how annoying it was to go up against a single target like that, only to find that I'm getting unlucky with my crits. That drove me crazy with the previous build because that's a real thing. You can see, like, if I'm not getting those crit explosions, reactivating Paley Luna's perk and stacking all that extra damage, it's pretty weak, but one once they actually, you know, are, are getting those explosions, it's really good. With the previous build, you basically needed explosions. With Whiteout Fiona in the lead, she was not adding any extra damage. Her whole purpose was to crit more often. If you weren't doing so, then the build just didn't function. It was just the Stormblade Bright Core with no damage bonuses. So in those instances, you're going up against a Smasher. <laughs> Going up against the Smasher and doing nothing. In this build, even if you're not critting, Paleo Luna is still adding tons of extra damage per second. Like I said in the video intro, something like 400 or 500,000 damage per second without any crit explosions. And with that amount of extra fuel added on top of the explosions, just destroying crowds of targets, it's a really, really satisfying build. Quick little taker for you. <laughs> I meant it when I said quick, too. I found a cave full of enemies. I don't think I need to eat the coconut, but I am standing in the storm, so I might as well. Might as well. Look at the nurses. The, the throwing thoughts, not nurses. We're just getting pushed towards me because they backed into their own teammates. <laughs> Easy. So bullying power level 160 enemies is like super easy and I feel like we had gotten the point but uh, since I couldn't find an encampment I started bringing all these enemies over but since I found an encampment now we have this huge crowd of enemies to deal with so let's see here let's bust out this wood pile right here there we go start on the basic enemies a little unlucky with the crits but as you can see once the ball is rolling it's just easy 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 then the encampment's gonna spawn in I'm gonna eat a coconut just uh, preemptively everything's gonna run to me and frame rate bug is currently available in the game that's uh, that's not you guys that's not even me that's just fortnite being what it is look at all that <laughs> oh it's so beautiful oh come on come here you know it's really frustrating to be recording this in a water zone walking slower is a huge annoyance but that's just kind of the thing with running melees sometimes that's just kind of how it goes and it's also why i have the xenon bow on hand that way i can just snipe an enemy if i if i need to thank you teammate pointing out a large encampment so even if it's like ride huskies and shielders i don't even think i'm okay nurses i'm so happy beautiful get to just watch everything die with low frame right thank you fortnite oh my god it's easy mode it's easy oh my goodness everything just dies except for this one baby that just didn't miss didn't get the memo that we were trying to kill them all. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the encampment. Oh no, I'm trapped in a room with a bunch of zombies. No, they're trapped in a room with me. Ah! <laughs> Sometimes a Xenon bow is just a better solution. You know, when they back up and you're running a melee, I don't even care. All right, 
We are here at Fort Fenix with a very, very strange build. And you can see Battle Beat's already active. I put down a few electric fields out here just to get her perk active more often. Swinging quicker and doing more damage is going to be great. I've only got 10 coconuts, which should be enough, but oh my god. Oh my goodness. You know, one of my teammates asked me if they should run Boom Base. And I said no, because I wanted to show this build sort of how it normally is without a teammate boosting it. But that's totally a thing you could do. If you have a teammate that's running Constructor already, Boom Base would just honestly help. You'd crit more often, do more damage. But as you can see, it's not even necessary. This is just beautiful. Is that a smasher in here? Yeah. So our newfound single target damage should be greatly improved. And I did not play that well at all. I should have absolutely jumped. But look at that. Look at that damage. You'll see the coconut again. Active for 30 seconds. Archer's out here trying to make a build work, but it's totally fine. This is just going to take care of it easily. So that's a great showcase of exactly what I was talking about, where Paleo Luna seems to be activating multiple times with this perk. And something I didn't mention earlier in the video, I guess I can say it now, is that we are not running a crit damage on this weapon. Like, obviously, we're trying to crit more often and do big crit explosions. What's going on? Well, the actual explosion when you crit with this weapon can't crit itself. So you crit with the weapon and you activate the explosion, but the explosion doesn't take any of that crit damage. So it just doesn't do more. And I did the math on Paleo Luna and she is functionally like a crit damage perk on her own. If she's applying to your crit explosion, she's basically like two crit damage perks with how much she's adding, which is insane. So yeah, we kind of have our crit damage built in with Paleo Luna, and I, um, I just think that's great. I think that's great. Alright, this is a beautiful moment. So this is gonna be for the intro of the video. Let's just enjoy the sounds of this weapon. Oh, bad moment, bad moment. Here we go. Isn't it so great? <laughs> so this is actually a great example of why you don't want to record this in an exploding death bomb mission. Coconuts are great. Oh, we have chrome husks right now, so some of these aren't going to die. You need to kill them with water or fire, but I'm not using either. Uh, so bad timing for recording this video during the blockbuster quest. I have not finished my quest line, obviously. The magnets quest on page nine is what you have to complete, and everybody in the party needs to have completed if you want to have no chrome husks, but eh, whatever. I mean, I'll just kill them over and over. I don't mind watching them fall on the ground to the power of this build. All right, nice little choke point. Teammates are using chain lightning, which is also very, very strong. Vacuum tube weapons are very, very good. Here's a video, link down below if you guys want to see just how good they can be. In my current recording of the game, they don't work as well as they should, but I won't worry about that because uh, that's just not what we're showcasing today. So this is again, all right? So Paley Luna is obviously adding on top. She's functioning as a couple of crit damage perks, and that explosion is attacking every single enemy in the vicinity every single enemy so crowds like it's really hard to record for a weapon like this because look how fast they die <laughs> i want to show you guys like the crunchiest most satisfying crit crit explosion that's what we call them crit explosion that we can but then everything around me is just dead in no time so yeah this is a really weird build fenix i did not think this would actually work chrome husks by the way they have a ridiculous amount of health they're comparable to smashers, and they're going down with ease. They're not staying dead, because I'm using the wrong element still, but yeah. That's uh, that's just how strong this build can be. Obviously, we've seen that, but uh, I don't care. This whole video is just going to be a beautiful showcase. Oh no, a bunch of basic targets, whatever will I do? I love that about melee. So, every single melee in the game has built-in crowd clearing, because as you swing the arc of your weapon, it can hit lots of enemies at once. So, every swing is hitting multiple targets, and in this instance, it's triggering multiple cases where it could potentially explode. And as you could just see, that explosion removes the beehives, which is really, really satisfying. All right, here we go. So we're losing a ton of damage. Need to eat two coconuts. I am running low. I understand that. I could have absolutely prepped better with my coconut supply, but I figured I could throw down a healing pad or something if I needed it, and that would be okay. But yeah, you're just hitting multiple enemies all at the same time, clearing the beehives, keeping you alive. I previously enjoyed Arlene Iza in the last uh, loadout. The reason that we can't use her in this one, I didn't explain it earlier, is that we are focusing on attack speed and Paleo Luna being awesome. So because of that, we are just not doing that much damage with the specific weapon itself. Previously, when we were specifically running Toy Rockin' Out, making the weapon crit, that made a lot more sense. Uh, Arlene Izo could keep us alive, but Coconuts, especially with their added damage bonus, is unfortunately it's just the superior version. I, of course, say unfortunately because Coconuts are kind of annoying to get. You can see in this instance, I'm running low on Coconuts because I'm standing in beehives and taking tons of damage from the storm and the enemies around me, but 
yeah, you might not always prep enough coconuts, or you don't want to, or you get unlucky when you're trying to collect them. Like, you searched for 10 minutes straight, but couldn't get enough coconuts, and... As I've played this game for more and more time, I have gotten less patient with coconuts. I've praised coconuts in many videos, and I will continue to do so because coconuts are amazing. But, yeah. Alright, what kind of mini-boss do we have here? Ooh, we actually have a mini-boss where I can do something. So, knockback is a problem. It doesn't seem like anybody's running slow field. Single target damage on this, on this build is good. Uh, I think we've explained that much. But, it's not perfect, and you can see that it's uh, it's not doing too much. It's a husky husk, so it's not like it's the weakest mini boss ever. But we would probably, I would probably be a lot better off if I just pulled out a pot shot. Link to the best perks down below. I'm gonna do that right now, actually, because as much as I am showcasing this weapon, let's not ignore the fact that versus a water mini boss, easy pot shot damage is just the best way to go. It's boring. You guys knew the answer already, but like, look at that. No matter how strong this melee build is. Yeah, squeezing out a couple million damage with no setup whatsoever. Not even running totally rocking out, by the way. I, you just can't beat that. Now, I probably had rock and riff active doing more single target damage. Uh, I'm sorry, more damage overall, but yeah, yeah, that's just that's just how good the pot shot is. Now, if you don't want to spend rock and ammo, the husk buster is a great, uh, great other option. I always recommend the husk buster because it's a really, really good shotgun that's base game available. Scavenger, so it's super cheap to operate and you don't have to don't have to worry about crafting it. Did my swings just do no damage there? Yeah, so I mentioned the vacuum tube bug earlier, and that's prevalent in a lot of different weapons in this game right now. Sometimes you'll swing and you'll attack a target and you'll just do zero damage. That's just uh, that's the current version of the game. That might be fixed by the time this video goes live. I couldn't possibly know that, but yeah, it's... Um, it's kind of how that goes. So you can see sometimes I'm just doing no damage. So consider everything you've seen so far and just know that this weapon should be doing better than it is. Uh, it seems like the bug has just started taking place recently here and it looks like my copy is about to break. So yeah. I think we've shown what we need to though. I might record a second part to this because I know this video is really long already, but I think we've gotten the point across. I think I'm gonna call it here. This this loadout's awesome. It is my favorite melee build, improved even further. Thank you so much to AS407 for doing all that math. He did a ridiculous amount of math. I don't think people need to make a spreadsheet just to convince me on every loadout, but if you're gonna go to that effort, it is highly appreciated, especially when it's something like this, where this is a build that is enormously fun to use. You know, I've said it earlier, like, it's not the strongest melee build. I'm pretty sure the Ravager has that title, but it doesn't matter. Like, when you're critting and exploding on so many different targets, like, I have the 1. million DPS in my brain, but, as shown, that 1. Million, 1. 1.5 million can apply to an entire crowd of enemies in front of you. It's awesome. And, yeah, I know I'm really low health right now. I ran out of coconuts. I'm kind of struggling. You know, like the end of that action movie where the main character's running out of ammo? That's basically me right now. But, yeah, that explosion and that extra damage applying to an entire crowd in front of you is insane. It's insane. We had minimal traps this mission. I mean, okay, Fenix did some a little, little extra here today, but... With minimal traps in a 164 player, with teammates who were briefed and understanding of the fact that I'm trying to record a video, kind of staying out of my way, letting me kill whatever I want. That's how strong this build is. You could probably use four people, this build, and plenty of coconuts, and maybe not even use traps. It's that strong. So, yeah. There's my new favorite loadout. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Definitely give it a try. Tell me what you think. Thank you again to AMS407. Uh, yeah, subscribe if you're new. Like the video. Check out one of these recommended at the end here, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>